hanging in there. How about yourself? Happy New Year. I'm, I'm great. <laughs> <laughs> good to, good oh. to meet you. Um, I was looking at your, your profile. It's amazing. You've done all this great stuff. You're a professor and billion-dollar company guy, huh? <laughs> it's uh, it, it, it's been an interesting lifetime. That's that's for sure. Very it is cool. uh, no, I I admit I wasn't uh, uh I, I kind of tell people this story. I wasn't ready to retire. You know, about yeah. close to close to ten years ago now. Uh, but unfortunately, is I woke up one morning and my retina had torn in my right eye, so I couldn't see a darn thing and had to have emergency surgery, which. Unfortunately for me, well, fortunately and unfortunately, I can still see, but it caused nerve damage in my eye. So it still it makes it so it makes it very difficult for me to read or do a lot of things um, oh, without it causing a significant amount of pain. So it made me retire. Wow. And that's when I had to say, all right, you know, is I can't do all the things that I used to be able to do. So what what can I potentially do now? And it kind of moved me on to, I would say, life number two which is, all right, how, how could I be able to keep getting some daily accomplishments and whatnot in something totally different? So one of the things that I did was I just called up a friend of mine who was the dean of the business school over at ASU, told her I was bored out of my ever-loving mind. Do you have anything for me to do? And she said, well, you know, we have a whole bunch of students within the MBA program and the undergraduate programs that desperately need mentorship. Would you be curious in doing that? And sure. And kind of kind of away I went from there. So now I, I do more roles at ASU than than most, like I say, including announcing at Sun Devil Athletics. So what can I tell you? <laughs> That's awesome. That sounds like a lot of fun. So there's 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 my there's my most recent background in uh, you know two minute nutshell. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's cool. That's a great what a great recovery there. <laughs> so how about how about you? Is uh, what what got what got you to where you're at today? Um, well, I. I have been coaching pretty much all my life, um, and I, I always wanted to help people. Um, so I, I coached in a lot of different jobs and occupations and sports, and um, I was uh, an English major in, in college, and I did a lot of fixing computers um, in college. My parents were both professors. I grew up on a farm. Okay. In West Virginia, actually, and uh, and then I moved up to Boston when I was about eighteen, and um, I, I started at, at UMass. Um, even though my 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 dad was a computer science professor, I still studied English. Okay. <laughs> and uh, then after school, I still worked on uh, computers, and I, I helped other people do the same. I um, started into healthcare IT. I did. Um, fundraising on the telephone for a bunch of nonprofits. Um, so I worked in healthcare IT for quite a while. I did um, networking and um, worked for a hospital system and um, I studied internet marketing for a long time since about the time it came out. Um, and so I, I started realizing a lot of those marketers were coaches and, and uh, I, I started. <laughs> they are. Started yeah, absolutely. studying coaching, and um, it was a little over two years ago I, I was able to start my own company and um, start coaching as an entrepreneur. Um, the the bug hit you is what you're trying to tell me. I yeah, understand. Maybe, yeah, maybe that's it. <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, so I, I, it's really what I love doing, helping people uh, with their goals and their life purpose. And people still come to me for help with their business too. Um, so I'm, I'm well, there's a, to... there's a, there's a huge overlap is I, I mm -hmm. see the exact same thing is, is, you know, I work primarily with students, but, but obviously, you know, as you'll get people that'll come to you all the time. And I constantly tell people that there's really a fine line, um, that's very gray of where mentorship kind of takes off and coaching really kind of steps into play mm -hmm. because, you know, Here's the example that I'll that I'll give usually when I when I meet say an MBA student for the very first time and I'm assigned as their mentor or something like that, and they'll have these grandiose ideas about things that potentially they can be able to do and how they can get introduced into companies and so on and so forth and and I again of course I try to be able to say yeah none of that matters if you're not sleeping well and if you're not working out on a regular basis and you're not you know you're not taking care of yourself and you're not mentally there yeah. or you know you're homesick or you know whatever whatever the case may be right. and 
they quickly realize that, oh my gosh, you're right. You know, a lot of times they don't realize it to begin with, but it's, it, like I said, is it, you kind of get that gray area. Is you're not, you're not going to meet the goals of mentorship if the basics of being a coach and, and someone's, you know, essentials to life just aren't there. Uh, you know, and, and I'm sure you figure it out, you know, all the time when you're trying to be able to coach people is the hardest thing is, so what is it that you really want to do? What is, what is it that you really want to be? What would, what would right. you like to be able to accomplish? And you can spend right. hours on that question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> a, a lot of people had never even had them, had anybody ask them, what, what do you want? What do you really want? If you could have anything, what do you want? And people, have, like a lot of people have never thought about it. <laughs> it no, seems it, it's kind of, and it's kind of, it is, it is kind of funny for me is, is I do think about it from time to time. And I was not any, I'm definitely, definitely no brighter than anybody else. That's, that's for sure. But one of the things that I even did kind of as a teenager was I said, all right, what are some of the things that I really like to do? And can I make a living at this? Uh, mm -hmm. And I knew that I thought computers were really cool. I think I couldn't tell you why. I knew I didn't want to be a programmer, but I just thought computers were pretty cool. And I love solving problems and thought, man, computers really might be able to solve a whole bunch of problems from a business perspective, so on. Mm -hmm. I knew I loved being with people. I knew I loved to travel. I knew that I loved being up in front of an audience, you know, and so like one of the many odd jobs that I did was in college when I was a college DJ. I would have been a DJ all the, you know, it would have been wonderful, except it doesn't pay. <laughs> <laughs> so you try to be able to decide, all right, so with all the things that I like to do, how can I apply that to a real job? And that's what kind of got me into systems engineering and sales and marketing and that good sort of thing. Because it, it gave me as much as what I enjoy as I could get, you know what I mean? And and that's kind of where when I made the transition to being a professor and that good sort of thing, it it really set in because I, I started thinking, all right, same thing is what do I really enjoy doing and what am I capable of doing now? And how can these two things kind of fit together? It's like, all right, no more proposals, no more. It's like that, that that's that's out the window. But I can still talk. My brain still works. All right. I can help coach and teach people that need it. All right. Cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just don't make me put a report together about it and I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> well, they, they got every book now on Audible, I guess, right? <laughs> you can listen well, to them all. You know, well, and, it, and it's funny is with the audio books, um, for things like autobiographies and history and things like that, mm -hmm. that actually works pretty well. Mm -hmm. um, but if you're trying to be able to, to do a technical journal, you know, as an example, mm -hmm. or even just like I was a murder mystery nut, you know, as I, mm -hmm. I, I love like a good, you know, Raymond Chandler novel or something like that, right, yeah. is audiobooks for stuff like that are just horrific because, you know, as you can only imagine, yeah, blah, 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 he said, and da, -da he said. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right, right. Stuff you wouldn't hear in your mind. <laughs> exactly. You know, yeah. just, you know well, have you, have maybe if they did AI a play, maybe it would be better, but you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. So yeah. what can I say? <laughs> have you heard about AI-assisted reading? I, I have not. I have this um, re Read It For Me, it's called. Um, okay. And, and so it, it, it's mostly aimed at um, business books um, is... I guess most of the aim for it, but it can be applied for all kinds of books. So it, it, it's AI summarization and, and reading. Um, so it, it kind of takes the, the meat of the book, like, you know, like you're saying, and skips over the filler and um, gives you a condensed version so that, you know, I've been able to start reading a lot. You know, I could read a book a day that way. And <laughs> there you go. It doesn't take any well, time. You know, I think, yeah, and, and probably for keeping up with things, that may, that, that actually may be a good alternative for me. I'm the kind of guy where, I would dig where I know I was successful is I would just work harder than the next guy. And I would dig more than the next guy, you know, and, and look for things that other people wouldn't see, you know? So, so when you look at a report as an example or some market research is I'd be digging. It's like, okay, I don't want to see what everybody else sees. I want to see something different. You know what I mean? And that's the kind of thing that you really can't do. So I, I look at even, you know, like, I can still do text messages and simple emails and things like that. Cause long, as long as this doesn't take any more than a few minutes, I'm all right. Mm -hmm. It's more few minutes and all of a sudden it, and it's like, nah, I need to stop. Mm -hmm. um, but um, you, you get kind of that cursory knowledge if you would, so you can kind of keep up to date with various things, mm -hmm. but you can't get to the level of detail, mm -hmm. you know, is, yeah. is, and cause to me, and maybe it's just cause I'm an old guy, 
you know, is there, there was something about, you know, just kind of being able to look at a page and maybe rereading something five, six, seven times mm -hmm. until, until you internalize it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like listening to a lecture versus, you know, or, or even going to a movie versus reading a book, you know, mm -hmm. is you read the book, you're going to get it a whole lot more than if you just saw the movie. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's true. You're right. So, oh, goodness. So where are you at now? You say you were in Boston. Are you still up there? Yeah, well, Western Mass. I'm a couple hours out of Boston. Well, remember, I went to Bentley, so I know the area very well. I'm just above Springfield, kind of. <laughs> okay, all right. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm actually... Well, I'm, old Bradley International Airport. <laughs> yeah, yeah, great, great. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm doing more organization stuff now. Um, I'm trying to put together a, a coaching group. I've started with a couple other coaches and... So we're going to have, um, I'm, I'm thinking about having tiers and, um, you know, having a, a, everybody's invited on the free tier and then, um, you know, have an upper tier. And, um, but besides that, uh, I'm also working on, um, I have a book coming out and I have some courses coming out. Um, and I just started with a couple of NGOs, um, human rights, um, based pretty much, uh, One's okay. helping people in Ukraine, and um, and the other is uh, about human trafficking more in Ghana. Okay. So I'm I'm trying to um, expand reach with those organizations now too. So <laughs> okay, it's, it's kind of a, a new a new thing for me um, working to try to grow organizations here in the new year. <laughs> okay. Cool. So what is what is it that you're looking for me to be able to help you? Um, oh, I don't know. That's that's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I know we just wanted at least to be able to connect because I knew that yeah. you know I I think we had kind of both seen that we mentor and coach people, so that's that's I'm sure that's how we connected. Uh, yeah. But you know I know that you had mentioned something about a podcast and mm -hmm. uh, you know various other things. Is yeah. I think that any anybody who mentors and coaches is going to have something in common with others that that do that um and of course it, it ventures into all kinds of realms you know is is you know from a personal perspective business perspective uh but inevitably it comes down to so what goals do you really want to be able to obtain and then okay putting a plan together on how to be able to make that happen uh you know from a business perspective obviously it can be anywhere from a brand new venture about what it is you're trying to be able to do to you know turning around an existing company or something like that personal things is, and it's why I do it, is I just have made it a life's mission to be able to help people, especially those that have been through issues like me, you know, that, that have said, all right, you know, I've, I've gone through life and then something happened to significantly change it. Now, where do I go from here? And I know that my issue was nowhere near, say, as significant as, as things that have happened to, to other people. You know, as you take service members and as an example that maybe have lost their limbs or something like that, or or somebody that has a very serious illness. Um, you know, I, I would never want to put myself in into their situation. All I know, though, is that from a life changing perspective, it was dramatic for me. And I knew what I needed to be able to go through. Um, and you try to be able to help people kind of through those steps, you know, just to be able to, to say, you know, they're there is still more to life. It may very well be very different than what you expected, but different doesn't make it bad it is you still have to make the best with what, you know, whatever you've come up with. And, and, you know, I try to be able to help people, you know, from, from that perspective, whenever they, whenever they need it. So. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's important to be flexible in your expectations like that, that th things aren't always going to happen the way you expect them to. <laughs> No, not even, not even remotely close. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> but it does, you know, it does take some time. Is I, I'll be the first to admit. Is is I'm no, I was no superhero. Is it is I got rather depressed for a while. You know, it's like wait a minute. You know, I, I was not ready to retire, yeah. and all of a sudden, things that you're used to doing all the time, not just from a business perspective, but something like reading as an example. Okay, you know is. I used to read constantly, you know, just for fun or, you, you know, when you travel on a plane to go somewhere in the world, because I've, I've been to all 50 states. I've been to eight of the 10 Canadian provinces. I stopped counting my passport when I hit 55 countries. So, you know, it was, and then all of a sudden it's 
nope, I'm home every day, pretty much sitting sitting in my home office. That you know is is you, you know you you had you had to hit that reset button and go. All right, it's not going to be that way anymore. So get used to it and make the most that you can. Um, but you know, admittedly, I kind of I still struggle with that every once in a while. I just have to you know always remember it's like nope, I'm not going to be able to have what we're there. But I got to be really happy with the way things are now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good for you. Good. That's good though. I, I think um, it sounds like you're you're in a good spot. <laughs> well, like I said, I do I do a, I do a number of things to enjoy to keep myself occupied and, and enjoy myself. Yeah. My wife does tell me is I'm probably busier now than when I was working full time, but hey, that's a that's okay. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, no, and things will things will things will hit you differently. It's like uh, when I was doing the closing ceremonies for Athletes Unlimited. Uh, it, was, it was a new women's professional volleyball league. Is it dawned on me? So I was like, wait a minute. But that means I'm going to be on live television with a couple of million people listening to what I have to say. Wait a minute. I better not screw this up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so you did a good job, huh? <laughs> now, and again, of course, one of the things that was just hilarious was at the very end, they shoot off all this confetti everywhere and you're going, oh, okay, not a problem until it lands on the sheet that I'm supposed to be looking at. Tell me what I'm supposed to say next. And now, you're, <laughs> now you're like, oh, crap. <laughs> it's like, stop that. Stop that. <laughs> the, thing, the things you would never think of, right? Yeah, yeah totally. <laughs> Oh goodness! Well, like I said, tell you tell you tell you what we can do from here is like I said, give give, give some thought, you know, as to if there's something that we can be able to do to be able to to help one another. Um, yeah. You know, if in your coaching business that you know you just need them, you need somebody else for them to talk to or something like that. Uh, feel free, and you know, I'll be happy to be able to do that. Um, if you do need somebody to kind of just like I say, have a webinar or a seminar or, or, you know, podcast just to banter ideas back and forth. Happy to do that, do that all the time. So oh, wow. that's awesome. not a problem. So oh, great. What a great resource. That's very cool. I appreciate that. Um, no problem. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I was thinking also anything you can tell me about building, uh, building my company, you know, that's what I'm, I'm trying to do now, get others involved and have contracts with people, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> or, first, First, the first rule of thumb is I will I will call it the ABS theory. Always be selling. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Benefits, right? <laughs> okay. But that said, is I will tell you something that I've told practically every salesperson that's ever worked for me and, and many students is nobody has ever bought anything from me. Or excuse me, I have never sold anything in my entire career. Never, never sold a thing. But people have bought billions of dollars worth of products and services from me. Think about the difference between what I just said. Okay. I'm not selling, but you'll buy. Okay. Because if you think about it is let's just say that you walked into a store one day and you're looking for a new suit and the salesperson, you know, starts working with you on kind of what looks good for your body cut and your hairstyle and all that good sort of thing. And you go home. You're not going to, you know, show somebody and say, hey, look at the suit somebody sold me. No, you're going to say, look at the suit I bought. Mm -hmm. So the good salesperson is the one that kind of helps you, but also lets it lets you feel like you were the one that made the decision. You move things forward and so on and so forth. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, that would yeah, be the I've first, be say, the first, be the first have... rule of thumb that I would tell you for your business mm -hmm. is people will tell you what they want, what they need, maybe not necessarily in those words, because if you ask them, what do you need? They're going to, oh, okay. <laughs> but if you listen hard enough, they'll tell you. And then you think, okay, within my bag of tricks that I'm looking to be able to provide, how can I be able to fulfill the need of that person? And what you try to be able to do is guide them as best you can to something that you know that you can do. You know, is that if they're talking about global warming and you go, oh, I don't have anything that can really help with global warming. So, okay, fine. <laughs> but I do have something that can help in professional development <laughs> is how do you kind of guide the conversation eventually to something that is talking about professional development. <laughs> mm -hmm, <right? laughs> 
but that's like I said, that's quote unquote selling. <laughs> right. Yeah, I've, I've heard uh, people love buying, but they hate being sold. <laughs> exactly. There's no nobody wants to be sold to. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Yeah. Um, I like uh, Jay Abraham. You like you ever you ever uh, hear Jay Abraham? I have not. Oh, okay. <laughs> he's he's pretty uh, he's pretty old school. Uh, a lot of the marketers all point to him and say they learned from him. So okay. He's, he's a good one to check out uh, on on YouTube. Uh, he, he has a video you can look up, Power of Preeminence. Okay. Um, yeah, I think you'd like it. <laughs> yeah. Like I said, I'm, I'm, about, I'm about as old school with that kind of stuff as you can possibly get. Okay. You know, yeah. So. It reminds me of what you're saying, though, so I, I think you'd like it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Absolutely. So when you're talking about starting your own business, is that's, you know, that's one of the things. The... The other is like is, is don't let yourself get spread too thin too quickly. Is let what you want and what people need kind of guide where you're going to go. Um, is don't like in other words, don't fall in love with <clears throat> never fall in love with your solution. Okay. Yeah. Is yeah. because your your potential clients will actually kind of form your solution for you as long as you hear it. Okay. So, but you don't want to be so many different things to so many different people because the only way you ever make money is, can I be able to repeat stuff over and over again is so 80% of the conversations that you have kind of wind up being very similar. Okay. That you can do. If every conversation is something brand new and you have to create from scratch and so on and so forth, no, is, uh, think of it as lean manufacturing, except in a service world, that's really what it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Cookie cutter conversations, right? <laughs> to a certain to a certain degree. Is is they may to you they may feel somewhat cookie cutter to the to the person on the other end. It's oh, these are all personalized to me. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, great. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally. Even though the message that you're delivering is pretty much the same message time and time again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Totally, I get that. <laughs> Makes sense. <laughs> No, but I have, I've felt so, like I said, so many, especially, especially recently, because I started two companies of my own from scratch, you know, was, in my career, ever since I left IBM and even at IBM, I was responsible for office systems in the days when PCs first hit the marketplace. So I was, I was the office systems guy. So I was dealing with things that nobody at IBM had never dealt with before. Um, and that's kind of always what I've been able to do is, you know, give me, give me something new something different to be able to work with. Um, and how can I be able to make it come together? Because I was always the kind of guy where if you told me, hey, you know, are you interested in building the Golden Gate Bridge? I'd say, sure. And then if you told me it couldn't be done, that would just make me more interested. But once the bridge is actually built and now all you're doing is painting it and maintaining it and so on and so forth, I'm bored. I don't go build another bridge. <laughs> <laughs> That's fun. I like that. I, I, I am the epitome of a serial entrepreneur in that respect. Uh -huh. <laughs> Venture Glut and growth. A glutton for punishment. Yeah. <laughs> New things and, and growth, huh? Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I like that. So where do you where where do you expect your your, your business to, to, to grow? Um well I, I just I want to see how many um people I can get involved with me and kind of let it take its own course and, and I figure it'll it'll kind of become its own entity and let people decide what's what's best for it. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll, try I'll give to, you try a to find people smarter than me to, to run it. Maybe I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> the, only, the only the only tidbit of advice I can be able to give you for something like that is coming up with something which is completely new and different is kind of a fallacy because mm -hmm. yeah. there's always going to be things that are going to be close. One of the one of the mm -hmm. first things people always ask is who do you compete against? And there's, and there's always going to be somebody, you know, is it's, it's a BS or, Oh, there's no competition. Yes, there is. Cause somebody's all must be doing something different today, which made you think of what you're doing now. Um, but what I, what I will tell people, and here's how I tell it to students is I go, look, getting a 4.0 grade point average and how your resume looks and all these other kinds of things that the school will tell you is important is not that important. What is important is to be different and to be memorable. How can you be able to gain mind share? 
And how can you be able to want people to kind of be able to follow along with what you're doing and what you believe in? Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be a huge difference. It just has to be different, right. unique, yeah. memorable. For me, it's kind of funny, is I walk around college always wearing one of my Australian cowboy hats. I've got a, about a dozen of them. People say, why do you always wear your hat? And I go, I just look at them and go, how do you remember me? And they go, oh my gosh. I said, I, when I walk around campus, <laughs> I'll get, I saw you somewhere. I did, is, I'm the guy in the hat. <laughs> does that make me better than, than any other professor? No, but does it make me more well-known than the vast majority? Yeah, it does. <laughs> you know, yeah. something, something that simple. You know, is so if you're putting together a consulting business or a mentorship business, you know, leadership, something like that, mm -hmm. yeah, is you can say, oh, I can do TED Talks, I can do this, I can do that. Okay. But what's going to be different about you? <laughs> like I said, the nappy big, little thing. Yeah. Yeah. That's going to make people remember who you are. <laughs> that's great food for thought. I love that. It's not, it's not hard. Mm -hmm. I tell people, is this is not a rocket science. My father, who is a rocket science, would be much more proud of me if it was. But I know I am not a, not a rocket scientist. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, it's so, like I'm not trying to invent the car. You know, I'm just trying to, to build a really good one. <laughs> exactly. And one that people want, and it'll make me money. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, right. Right. So, uh, well, tell you what, is there, any, is there anything else that you'd like to talk about this afternoon or... Maybe I, I should have had more questions lined up for you, I guess. It seems That's like okay. <laughs> maybe feel, next time feel. we talk, I'll, 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 have to, I'll have to put some more thought into it. <laughs> sure. Feel feel free and we can talk anytime. Okay. Anytime. Awesome. awesome. I really appreciate that, Craig. It's really, really great meeting you and all. It was. It was a pleasure. I'm glad, I'm glad we had a chance to be able to connect. And but like it is tell and tell me if I'm remembering remembering something wrong. Did you say that you were looking to be able to do a podcast at some point in time? Was that something yeah. that I, or am I am I mixing two conversations together? Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I do. I have a podcast. Um, you know, I, I record stuff and post it on YouTube conversations. So um, if you want to have a podcast conversation, uh, we could do that. It's up to you. Okay. Like, like, I I do it from both sides. I'm the interviewer and the interviewee. So what can I tell you? <laughs> have, you, have you had a lot of episodes so far? How, how many uh, do you know? I couldn't tell you. I'm, not, I'm never the, I'm never the one that publishes it. I'm, I always do it for people, so I okay. I, I couldn't tell you. <laughs> cool. <laughs> people, I actually have a friend of mine who keeps asking. So how did you really put together a podcast? I'm like, hell if I know. Is people ask me and I show up. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> yeah. so for me, it's easy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Just talk enough, huh? <laughs> That's it. Hey, you know, wind me up and I'll talk. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right, Greg, well, I'll get a hold of you sometime again soon and, and we'll have another conversation <laughs> alright sounds good well it was great talking to you uh, and have a happy new year yeah happy new year indeed alright take care bye bye